one last video for the week of my um, Facebook product of the week, which you've seen a lot of this um, stamp sets or cards made with the stamp set so far this week on YouTube. Um, it's been the Wishing You Well, which is a distinctive um, stamp. You can see that in our catalog. This is on page 35. And when it's a distinctive stamp set, you'll see the little um, symbol down in the corner. And that just means that it's a special copyright that um, Stampin' Up! has on the design. When you stamp it, it looks like maybe that you stamped once and then again and again to get different layers of color. But you didn't. You just stamped once and the way they designed it, um, you just stamped once and the etching gives you that effect. It's beautiful. And if you've not caught the videos for this stamp set, when I'm done watching, you're done watching this one, go watch some of my other ones because it's so pretty and you're really going to like it. Um, this particular distinctive line also comes with a You Can Make It, which if you've not noticed these in our catalog, it's a little grouping of projects and this is a You Can Make It cards. So it says Wishing You Well cards and it comes with the stamp set and then all of the stuff that you need to make, in this case, cards. Um, so you can make the cards. And I did a Facebook Live today, but not in this Facebook Live today. I where to put it. Um, where I did this card here. I did this card here, um, which is the same card and it's so pretty. Um, so it comes with the card stock and a couple of ink pads. It's great if you're a new stamper because it would have everything you need to make cards, um, including the blocks to mount your stamps on. So adhesive, it has everything you need. Um, so I highly recommend that if you've not taken a look at the page of the catalog, have a look when you're done watching this. Don't leave now, but when you're done. Um, um, and it's a year-round stamp set. You're going to see that in a second. It's in the holiday catalog, and I know it says Seasons Greetings, but it's definitely a year-round stamp set. Um, and a reminder that if you purchase anything from me this month, over $50 and over, and you pop in the host code, you're going to get a free packet of the chicken wire elements, which if you've not seen them, they're paper. They're not wire. It's paper. Um, silver on one side, white on the other. Um, and the white side can be colored with um, blends or a bunch of different ways to color them. And at some point I will use them, but they're on back order. So I didn't want to use the ones that I have so I'd be able to send them out to you. I had one open packet and I was giving them away to some of my girls so they could use them. So I didn't want to I haven't used much of them. I've been cutting apart the ones I had. Um, and if you're not on any of my other social media sites, either get on my email list or make sure that you hop over to my website occasionally or one of my um, Facebook, I have a Facebook business and a Facebook group. Um, from there, you'll be able to keep up with my specials. Um, like this week, if you spent $100, you got a free take your pick tool. Um, in addition to the chicken wire elements. Um, but by the time I post this, that will have ended. But I switch up my specials often, so they accommodate everything. Um, and also, if you're on my Facebook group, you get to be involved in polls that I do about what stamp sets I do focus on. Um, and I want I wanted to show the ones that you're interested in purchasing. So if there, you can vote in the polls. Right now in the running it seems to be country, the Country Lane Suite and the Making Christmas and Everyday Bright. Um, and I have the Winter Woods. I already told the girls who come to my classes. Winter Woods will be an artistry, art, I can't talk, artistry inspired class coming up in October. Hopefully the first week, first or second. And I'm going to try to get a real quick artistry inspired in the next week or two. For September and those are if you buy the stamp set from me I know some of you um, have just started following me on YouTube and might not know about my artistry inspired you buy the stamp set and a couple of other things usually stamp pads um, from me those ship to you and then I send you the supplies for three cards free no cost um, and then you also get the links either private YouTube links or into a Facebook group your preference um, with the instructions to how to make the cards. Um, so those are fun. So then the cards that you often see on YouTube, the only way you get to see those is to be part of my artistry inspired classes. But the only cost to you is the actual cost of purchasing the 
the stamp set. The actual card supplies are free, so those are fun. And if you're on the Facebook group, then you get to help me pick sometimes, which sometimes I pick because, you know, it's mine, and sometimes I like things that um, the general public doesn't like, um, and sometimes I want to play with those. But I'm going to show you um, the last card, and this is, you may have seen the video because there is a video on YouTube for this one. This was a camp project, and in all of my September camp projects that had all six cards up, this was featured, and it said, these are my six projects, and this was one. But I started to cut the paper on Thursday, the camp was on Friday, um, and this one just laid there, and I was not feeling it. It was the very first card I made from the holiday catalog. It was my very favorite set when I ordered from the holiday catalog, but I just wasn't feeling it. And it wasn't like I didn't like the card. I, I didn't know what I didn't like. But as I started to cut the paper, I realized it didn't look like it was a seasonal card anymore. I like the color, obviously. I'm into the farmhouse, I'm into the white. I like that, but it doesn't, it's fall. It was, it was 90 degrees here, so it's not the, the hot thing, but it's fall. It's football time. <laughs> um, and all of my other cards had a fall feel. So I decided I would switch it up and maybe that's what um, I needed. So I thought, I wanted to still, to, I wanted to use the galvanized paper because it was, it's new. Um, so I went, I thought maybe if I made it copper, mm, didn't like that. I thought maybe if I added some wood, I didn't like that. So I'll kind of walk you through my process because um, I get so many questions on how I come up with things. And sometimes it is lack of sleep. Um, but this is how I did this. I decided I would go with the wreath. I was gonna keep the wreath, the tentile, and the ribbon. Um, because the way my other camp projects were, this was going to still be on this card. Um, so I'll walk you through what I did. And then you'll see the card that we came up with. So hold on while I move you down here. And make sure that you can move my stuff back. My stuff still was good for the Facebook Live, but the camera, a little bit different angle. But I can edit this after, so that kind of helps. I know it will help. This gets pushed back when I do a Facebook Live because this camera is a different angle. Okay, that's better. Okay. So, I decided first I just changed the colors of this. This is Pear Pizzazz, Highland Heather, and Daffodil Delight. So, I just immediately changed, I just went to stamp the card first. Um, and I just switched the colors. So, this is white. So, I went to vanilla. And I did the inside of the card and the, um, the wreath. And then I decided I would work from that. So I went from Pear Pizzazz to Mossy Meadow. And the secret with these stamps is to not press too hard. You don't want to press too hard into the stamp pad. Or it's still arranged a little funky. Because when I do a Facebook Live, I have to have my computer sitting here. And the camera angle is just different the way the Facebook Live does it. So... If you press too hard, you lose that dimension, and you don't want to lose. You don't want to lose that. So that's now mossy meadow instead of pear pizzazz. And then my bow, I went to Cajun craze. This is like a color we've had forever, and recently I've just discovered that I love it. Who knew? I did not know that I loved it, but I do love it. So here again, don't stamp too hard on either. And here, that's what I mean about having the, um, it looks like you stamped what we call stamp off. You know, if you stamp the first time and then you stamp the second time and the third, how the colors get lighter. But that's just stamping once and it does that for you. And then I decided I wanted this to be a birthday card because everybody at camp, that's like the most thing everybody always needs. So here's the inside of my card. And I went from white, which was more of a, at first I thought this was summer, the longer I looked at it, this is really a spring card. 
So I went from a white background to espresso. And because it's espresso, then I'm, instead of stamping on the inside of the white, I've added a vanilla inside. So here's espresso ink, and here's the flower stems or the wheat or whatever you choose. It depends on the time of the year. If it's fall, then they can be wheat. If it's spring or summer, they could be flower stems. I'm going to kind of stamp them down here in the corner, kind of a little off my card. And again, you don't want to stamp them too hard because it gives you that nice, distinctive look of color. Um, and then here's this as a happy birthday saying that I pulled out of one of our birthday sets. And it's um, one that was in the Occasions catalog. And I'll list it down in the supplies because I don't remember the name of it. But it also has a bow in that set, so it would be a nice set to go together because you could work the bows together. This bow is my favorite part of the set. So, happiest birthday to you. And then I'm going to put the bow again, again in Cajun. This time I'm going to use it to hold the wheat together. There. And then it comes with these berries. Um, and so on this, I want them to be copper. We don't have copper ink, but we have this new copper shimmer. So if you shake this up, it has a little ball inside, kind of like spray paint. But when you shake it, it gets on the lid. And mine's been through a lot because we have used it a lot. I've used it a lot. We've used it a lot at camp. Um, but these three little flowers right here, they aim perfect to go around the wreath. So I'm going to ink those up. And my stamp did not get cleaned after my camp on Friday night, and it's now Sunday. But um, I did not notice that until I did my life a minute ago. So when I'm done, I'll just take a magic eraser to it, and it'll come off. But if you um, just pop it on your chamois right after you do this, it comes right off. So there's three there. And the next three won't be as dark, but that's okay. And then I'll do it again. It takes three times. I did another card last week. Um, and I did the same thing. You may have caught that with the wheat. And I did the same technique, but I inked the whole thing that time. We've had these shimmer paints in the past, and when they were discontinued, I still had some left, and I've decided this time I'm not going to have any left. So I'm going to use them, and we have I've used my copper's almost gone. We've I've had it a month. Um, so I'm going to shimmer the heck out of things, and I have all four colors, and I've been using all four colors. So there we go. So there's that one. And you can see that I kind of was sloppy around the edges because I'm going to cut my wreath out. So it doesn't matter. And I'm just going to take my chamois and get that off of there. Because then on the inside of my card, I am going to use the crushed curry. Um, and right when I was going on my Facebook Live, I realized all of my snails that were up here were out of um, anything. So I'm using a fuse, but you can use snail. Or if you still have fuse, you can use fuse. It just needs to be adhered. So there's the inside of and that's, I think that's a lovely inside of a card. It's starting to get dark. I'm not used to it getting dark earlier. 
You know, that's one drawback from going to summer to fall. Okay, and so then you just, this type set does not come with any dies, so you do have to fussy cut. Which, you know, can be a bummer, but the one good thing about that is it never leaves you with the dilemma, do you buy the dies or do you not buy the dies? Because you don't have a choice. But this set is easy to cut, so it doesn't take long at all. And remember when you cut, you always leave a little bit of an outline. You don't cut right up to the edge, because if you cut to the edge and then you cut into it, then it looks bad. So if you leave a little bit of an edge, you don't have to, it, even if you cut it a little different all the way around, the optical illusion will um, make it look better. So never cut right to the edge. And you can cut way faster if you're not cutting right to the edge because it doesn't have to be perfect. So there's my bow. And then with this, it doesn't have to be perfect and you don't have to cut around every leaf. Again, just an optical illusion that it's swirly. So I just kind of move my paper. And you can see where I got the copper and it kind of came off the edges. It's getting cut off, so that's why I wasn't super careful about where I was getting the copper. Um, and then this is fun. I'm going to take um, our paper piercing pad. And this is the take your pick tool. Um, and the poke tip of it. And I'm just going to kind of make a hole right here. This is, it makes a nice starting point to put my scissors in. And again, it does, this does not have to be perfect. The only thing you want to make sure is that you're not cutting off one of your leaves. But often when you do something with one of our dies, that's how it cuts out anyways. It's not perfect. It just is cutting it out. So then when I had that, I decided, well, let's see again if what it looks like on here. And it just gets all kind of lost, so I didn't like that. So I decided, well, you know, the silver paper, we were using it on a different card. If you've seen my Winter Woods um, video, that was one of my camp projects. So I decided we were using the silver paper, so let go of the silver paper, or the galvanized paper, and go with something else. So I decided that I would try our copper paper, since I was going with the copper a little bit. So let me get my big shot up here, because the um, tin tile embossing folder is beautiful. If you've not seen it yet, it is so pretty. You know, I think that I don't have one of the pieces of paper over here that I need. So I may have to leave the camera just for a second. Hey Serge, yeah. can you cut me a, th my husband's in here, a three by three um, square of that brown paper? Copper? No, the br um, brown. Is it? Yep. Thank you. So this is the tin tile embossing folder. And it's dark now because my husband's standing in front of the window. Can you move out of the front of the window? <laughs> it's really dark because he's blocking all my light. Thank you. Um. This is the new folder, and you know our new folders have the line here. So I'm going to, when I did it live, because I was holding it at a funny angle, it wasn't straight very well. That looks pretty straight. So I'm going to put this in here. Swing the handle back over towards me. ones only need one plate. <laughs> so roll that through. And then look how beautiful that is. Isn't that beautiful? That was so pretty. So I decided, yes, that was finally going more the way I wanted. So I then wanted to mount this on something, but this has so much dimension that this needed something. Um, 
and the color was right because it matched the card. It lifted the wreath up like you noticed it. So I decided to go with the wood look, um, but just not as strong as the wood paper. And I love the wood paper. It's one of my favorite papers, but it was not, it was too rustic for this. So I got the wood embossing folder. And I just ran this through here. doing it at the angle and I can't see over the top. And again, it's a super thick plate, so just one or folder, so you just have one plate. And then that just gave it a little bit of texture, so then it looks better on that. It doesn't look so flat. Then I'm going to take this again. Um, and then when you have this, I know my bow is going to cover up part of, I have copper on my fingers, they're beautiful, um, part of this. So what I do is I look for the part, like right here, they, this is the part where they're least stamped. So this is where I want to be the top. So I'm going to mount my wreath here, because that way my bow will cover up. If you made a mistake stamping, then just have your bow cover that part up. Put that and then you're going to take this piece and mount this here and I'm going to take my take my pick tool again I'm going to poke a big ish hole because I'm going to use our new um, braided linen trim and it frays on the end so the bigger the hole the um, easier it is to stick this through because it frays a little bit so if the hole's bigger then it doesn't fray when you pull it through and I just want this to look like I tied it and this is this is from the holiday catalog it's so pretty, but I want this to look like it's hanging through uh, on a door. I'll just tie a knot up here at the top. Like that. And I'm going to take some dimensionals. Put them either side because this knot, I mean, this ribbon has some dimension. So if you just put adhesive over the top, then there would be a little bump in your bow. This way it will just hold it up flat over the top of your ribbon. have um, pretty things that are embossed, especially the new corrugated. Oh, this one's running out. Um, the corrugated folders or any of these folders, if you put your adhesive on the back of these, then it can smash them. So it's better to put your adhesive on the back of your card itself. And I'm just going to take my scissors. I'm almost finished. And this frays nicely. You can just get it started with your scissors, and then you can just kind of pull it apart. Gives it a little bit more of the fall weathered look. <coughs> Excuse me. And that would be my fall allergy sounds. I haven't even been outside today. I'm going to pick up the newspaper. There you go. So I went from, where did I put my other one? I have this card so many times because now I've made it so many times, but I will, oh, here it is. Um, so this, and you can see how this one just looks springish to me. I think you could do a beautiful summer one. Um, if it was, I think it needs to be maybe like red flowers or, you know, pink flowers or maybe a red bow. I think 
the purple yellow combination to me just kind of says spring um, but this one definitely now says fall um, but how about if you take this one and you make um, red berries and maybe a gold bow even with the same silver or maybe if you do a winter one with a blue bow even on this silver and maybe some um, <coughs> um, dark blueberries so you could take this oh I'm gonna have to get a drink which is why I have my water here once my sneezing starts then my allergies kick in but this um, same card you could mix the backgrounds or you could even mix background papers although I did find because that was one of the things I thought that I could maybe switch to background papers you know, it doesn't take much to overwhelm the wreath because it's kind of um, a dainty design but you could mix up different embossing folders but by changing the colors um, this year this wreath can go year-round and definitely this bow can be a birthday bow a baby bow um, a Christmas bow a wreath bow it's got so much potential this stamp set so I hope you take a look at it I hope you've enjoyed watching all of the videos that go along with it so that's what I have for you today you have a good night bye